Okay, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's coverage here in Monaco. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Monaco Crypto Summit presented by Digital Bits, uh, media partners Cointelegraph and theCUBE. Uh, a lot of great stuff going on here. Digital Bits and the ecosystem around the world has come together to talk about the next generation, uh, NFT environments, metaverse, uh, blockchain, and all the innovations going up and down the stack of the decentralized world. That will be soon a reality for everybody. We have a great guest, David Lutkatch here, who's the co-founder of Af Aftermath Islands Metaverse, which I got a little sneak preview of, but David, thanks for joining me. Thanks, John. Great to be here. Uh, we had dinner the other night at yep. Nobu. It's great to know you, get to know your background. Thank you. have a stellar uh, pedigree. Um, you run public companies, you've been involved in tech media across the board. Again, this is a ship we're seeing like we've never been before. Perfect storm, technology change, cultural change, yep. business model transformation, all around de decentralization, crypto, Token economics, decentralized applications, metaverse. I mean, come on, we haven't. We're, and digital identity. There was identity, which you're involved in. Take exactly. us through. What are you working on? Take a minute to explain what you're working on, and then we'll get into it. So, Aftermath Islands is is really a combination of three things: uh, digital identity, the ability to prove who you are, because we think the internet. And I think everyone would agree, the internet's broken. You know, um, nefarious actors, bad actors can be anywhere. Um, hacks, fake spots. So by being able to prove that you're a real person, not necessarily verifying your identity, but prove that you're a real person, um, can add a lot of benefits to everyone in the ecosystem. Second thing is, we combine that with avatars, NFTs, and credentials. Because I'd like to represent myself as a little more buff than I am, and, <laughs> and maybe a little taller. And uh, then the third thing is, we put it in a Unreal Engine, so real, realistic, photorealistic game engine metaverse, that requires no downloading. It's all pixel streaming. Just like you'd stream Netflix, you can stream the game. I want to ask, because this is I know it's a hard problem because I've asked a lot of people the same question. Mm -hmm. The Unreal Engine is really powerful. Very. And, and the imagery is amazing. Like gaming, we all know what it looks like. Yep. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's not everyone's getting it right. What makes it so special? How are you guys cracking the code? Well, I think it's our experience. I mean, we've worked for major entertainment companies, major technology companies, major sports companies. So, um, as I, I, just to use your word, because it being uh, want to be humble about this, but we do have a, a great pedigree. We've also got, brought great people to the table. So having a platform isn't enough. We've got great creators, and uh, we've got great storytellers. So we've got the Nisiessa brothers. One, uh, Mariano is is a, a illustrator and former special editor, uh, project editor at Marvel, and his brother Fabian is our storyteller, who's the co-creator yeah. of Deadpool. So we've got great people, and with Unreal Engine Five. We've really taken it from the ground up. Yeah. We've looked at it and, and we've really combined it with new GPU cloud serving and pixel streaming so that, you're, so that the individual that's, that's involved, engaged, immersed, is now really yeah. playing it without having to download a graphics package. Yeah, and also you, you dropped some names there and some, and, some, and some brands. I know there's a lot more at dinner. We talked a lot about them. You, you know all the top creators. And again, I love the creator culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's got a new buzzword around, but ultimately it's artists, people building right. stuff. Application developers in the software world, movies and film, art, right. art and code is kind of coming together. Exactly. It's the same kind of thing. Media and coding, it's like the same mindset. <laughs> Creative, exactly. crazy good, smart, in a good way. Um, in the blockchain, it's harder because you've got all this underlying infrastructure and stuff to provision and build. Often creators say, oh man, it's like doing chores. It's like, I just want to build cool stuff. I don't want to get in the weeds of all the tech. Right. This is like, whoever cracks the code can unleash that heavy lifting so the artists can like feel good about kicking ass, taking mm, names. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm being a, sly, a little sly here because we've sort of broken it into three areas and we've used blockchain to bookend the platform. So we still think that, um, that gaming and the interactive platform has to have centralization. It has to have decision making. It, we have a great community um, uh, between Twitter and um, Discord. We have over 30,000 people. And we have organizations that have already um, uh, spawned um, themselves up or, or spun up to um, manage our land ownership and some of our guilds for some of our professions. But at the same time, they're allowing us to make decisions based on what the community wants. I mean, I've heard recently, um, I don't want to say it's a horror story, but it's been difficult that consensus based models for development have to get consensus and not everybody agrees. Yeah. You still need a leadership. I mean, you still need sort of a captain yeah. on a ship to make sure that it is I mean, but Penel and the dictatorships are work and well. No. I mean, Linux um, tried that and they worked for a while, but when they moved over to, we're going to make some decisions, right. have an opinion, 
right. whether it's centralization, it's faster. Yeah. Consensus systems can be diverse and time consuming. Well, I, I agree. The they can be political as well. I mean, you can, you can, it can become problems. So at the front end, we've got digital identity, yeah. and that's all blockchain-based. And at the back end, we have over 20 services, including DIDS and DIDCOM, which is Decentralized Identifier Communication, and all our services are blockchain-based. But in the middle, um, connected to NFTs, blockchain, and everything else, and to our digital identity, we have a game or a game platform or an open-world platform that is centralized, built on Unreal Engine, so that we can make those decisions that spur yeah. on I mean, individual it's an development. It's, it's an architecture. It is. I mean, this is essentially an operating environment. Exactly. You can have the benefits of the decentralized, own exactly. your data, own your identity, mm -hmm. okay, and then have the middle be the playground and built. Right. Now, that has to get done faster, and you're constantly iterating. Exactly. So you need to have that. Exactly. So what are people saying about this? I mean, to me, I think that makes a lot of sense. People are very intrigued. Um, we're getting a lot of traction. First of all, Unreal Engine in the middle, um, brands love it because it, it provides a realistic view of a brand. Brands have spent you know, hundreds of millions of dollars building brand equity and they do, don't necessarily want a cartoon representation of their brand. So brands love it. Um, uh, we showed a video here at the Monaco Crypto Summit of some of, and our, our videos available online on YouTube but we're showing realistic, yeah. we can create realistic avatars. So people are really excited yeah. about what we're doing. You know, David, I think one of the things that I've, I've had controversy statements in the past that got all the purists, mm -hmm. going back to 2018, you know, throwing tomatoes at me, but other halves like loving it. Because at that time, there was dogma, oh, blockchain's got to be done. And, you know, it was slow and gas, mm -hmm. it was, wasn't yeah. that? Yeah. So why, I can use a database. Now we use the blockchain for smart contracts. Right which you, that's what you want to do. You don't want right. to have that locked in. You right. want immutability. So again, there's opportunities to advance faster mm -hmm. and not have to get stuck in the dogma, but maybe get back to it later. I, I Database agreed. is a great example. I, agreed. I think, I think over time, the community will take over the entire platform. But I think at the beginning, you have to have, again, yeah. you have to have a rudder on a ship to make it go somewhere. I mean, it's called product market fit. Exactly. You've got to get to the market exactly. with a product. People go, that's, I want that. Exactly. I mean, Unreal Engine is hard. I know, and what are some of the people you worked with? Because I think, I think what I like about what you're working on is that you are, an, I think, the uh, great poster child of, in terms of the organization, of a group of people that are pros, mm -hmm. that want to do great work in a new world with the kind of experience and tools that they had in their old world. Right. Faster, cheaper, better, more control. Well, we were there at Web 1. We're there at Web 2. And now with Web 3, we have a, the ability to fix some of the things that we thought were wrong with Web 1 and 2. So, and move into the ownership economy. And, and really, um, for us, we've got a great team of people you know, around the world that we work with, and we're starting to bring in larger organizations to support us. I mean, our digital identity, we're really working with the backbone at IBM. And digital identity is very different in blockchain than is crypto. And we're working with great people in crypto now, and we announced today that we're minting our native token dubs with digital bits. So we're really Congrats. excited about Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, let me ask you a question, because I, I love the fact that you've rolled multiple ways of innovation. Again, I'm with you on that, with shared experience there. Different, different ride for different waves. Mm -hmm. What have you learned and shared to folks who are going to dip their toe and get on their surfboard, so to speak, use the California metaphor, because we're both Californians. Mm -hmm. What is Web3 wave like? How's it different from two? What's the learnings? Can you share scar tissue experience, uh, observation, anything around what you're doing now that, so they can get insight into this wave? Well, you know, Web1 and Web2 were broken. Uh, I mean, you could never go in, I think we had this discussion, you could never go into an electronic store in the real world, write your information down on a piece of paper and expect that you'd walk out of the store with a purchase. But we can type in information that is non-verified until I could take my friend's credit card, know where they live and use it. Uh, by using digital identity at a front end, we create one user, one account. That user can have thousands of verifiable credentials around them and hundreds of avatars. So I think what we've really learned is the ability to progress in a way that, that really puts data back in the hands of consumers and makes them the owner of their identity. By starting there, we have a world in front of us that is valuable to marketers, valuable to brands, and valuable to individuals. And whether it's education, whether it's government services, whether it's retail, everything can be built on that simple premise that I am myself.
know, it's interesting, there's a, there's a concept in technology where called presence. Yep. You know, you're present at an event, you're present at a, a, a store, you're present in some reality physically, mm -hmm. and you have credentials around that presence contextually. Exactly. exactly. You're saying you can have one NFT, one digital identity, or identity, and have multiple identities that have context all stored. All stored. In an avatar, it's like changing your suit. Hey, I'm going into the Apple store, I'm now my Apple John. And, and, and think of it this way, um, brands can now connect with you and give you promos, give you product, based on the information that you're willing to share with them about your real person. And your avatar becomes your intermediary. So your payment information is stored within your digital identity and your avatar, not at the retail level. So this is a concept we've been working on for a long time. I think we were talking about it dinner, but I want to bring this up for you, for you to comment and get a reaction to, is that if you, what you just said is true, that means if I'm the user and I have power to control my data, the script flips. Now I'm brokering my data to the brand, exactly. not the other way around, exactly. or some intermediary. Exactly. I'm in control. Exactly. And I could demand, based on what my contextual relevance is, to the brand. And because the brand is willing to pay for that, because if you think about it today, um, social media unfortunately is plagued yeah. by fake accounts you know, and, and issues. And, and so brands are spending all this money and they're getting slippage and breakage and that's spent. If they know you're a real person, yeah. they're more likely to want to give you an incentive to engage okay. with them because it's a one-to-one -one transaction that creates value. That's a great point. You mentioned Twitter earlier. Look at Elon Musk uncovered all the bots exactly. on Twitter. Um, and if they ever did that to Facebook, I'm sure there's a ton of different accounts on Facebook, but you know, it, it's out there. These walled gardens have nefarious bad actors. Mm -hmm. bad, it's not truth, is what, what's the truth? I mean, gaming has this right now. It's like you're anonymous, you can go anonymous, or you got to go real name. So well, you're going to We've both. got a hybrid. You can do anonymously verified. <laughs> so because we use biometrics to verify that you're a real person. So awesome. you can stay anonymous, but we know you're a real person because your biometrics belong to you. Well, David, great to have you on theCUBE. You've got a great insight and experience. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, John. Uh, what's next for you guys? You want to put a plug in for what you're working on? You're looking for people, funding, more action. What's, what are you guys doing right well, now? Well, we've, we've self-funded to date and we're, we're finally going to be releasing um, opportunities for people to engage with us in tokenomics. And that's why we've, we're working with Digital Bits. But we're also looking for great people and great partners. We're creating an interoperable, open um, uh, world where we want to bring partners to the table. So anyone who's interested, reach out to us. All right, David, thanks for going on theCUBE. All right, more coverage here on theCUBE. We're all over this area. Been going back to 2018, when we brought theCUBE to all the events, been covered on siliconangle.com since 2010. And watching this wave just get better, the reality is here. It, it's a metaverse world. It is a decentralized world happening to everyone. Monaco Crypto Summit here in Monaco. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more after this short break.